Hello and welcome to the Becker County Museum Roadshow. And a special welcome to Arvo Thompson, a longtime resident who moved away to a foreign land of South yes. Dakota, yes. right? Maybe not far in south. Maybe not. <laughs> but he came back to do mm -hmm. a show with the, on the Detroit Lakes Fire Department. You were with the fire department for many years. Yeah, How many years? 20, 25 years. 25 years. I retired in 1986. Oh, okay. So I've been retired quite a while. You have been, but you were, you have a good memory. But the young guys took over. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's a young man's game. Once you get to be 50, you don't belong there anymore. No, and you weren't there when they first started the fire department no. in 1885. No, I, I, I missed that by a little bit. You did, but you've heard <laughs> stories? Oh, yeah. What kind of stories have you heard? Oh, the stories and the trucks and problems they had on getting firefighters, you know. And even pulling the old cart down by hand down well, the street. Well, I wondered about that. They still have the hand cart. They do. You know, they said they bought a truck, and I thought, a truck? Well, they, had, they used to have Model Ts and old, okay. old, old trucks, you know. And then they kept upgrading, upgrading, and now it's <clears throat> you know, a lot different. Oh, it certainly is, yeah. Um, they had a chemical wagon. No, what, what what did that hold? Well, that actually it was a chemical uh, solution in there, but that was built by the firemen here in town. It was a Dodge. And after they got done with it, they sold it to Ray Amundsen out here. And he finally, uh, his kids sold it to the uh, Waban Fire Department, and now they have restored it, and it's in parades. So when you oh. see a truck from Waban, it's, a little, it's like a little pickup, and it had a, it was a chemical. It, they'd, it would flip over and it would charge it and they would spray chemical, some kind of chemical out. It wasn't a very big truck. What, was it like a fire extinguisher? I mean, would yeah, it be? Yeah, Okay. Like an oversized one. No, okay. But it was, it was a Dodge uh, pickup, actually, they built it on. Yeah. And then they've got it restored just beautifully. Well, I joined, our, our ladder truck was a 27 American France, which is now a parade truck. And our backup pumper was a 1936 uh, open cab little, little Chevrolet. Our tanker was an old milk truck. I mean, that's what we had to fight fire with, and our lead, our lead pumper out was a 1948 Chevrolet. And then <clears throat> they moved up from there, and then that next year we got a 61 Ford, which built in 61, we got in 62. And that was a big upgrade. And then from there on, it gradually replaced everything. Well, I understand that they, you know, I've been reading about all this stuff. Uh, they had three fire departments at one time? Did you ever understand no. that? Well, I wondered if, I know they had <coughs> the chemical company, they called it, and then they had the hook and ladder, and yeah, maybe that's all, what it, it was. It was all the same. Same, yeah. okay. Well, I thought it was interesting. The hook and ladder house cost $231.25 to build. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the horse ca carts cost 300 right. But the uniforms that they bought for yeah. the men in 1892, and they called them laddies, um, cost nine hundred and four dollars and seventeen cents. Yeah, that was for all the men. All the men. Yeah. I mean well, not a piece nine hundred nine hundred for, yeah, all, for yeah. all of them. Yeah. The department has dress uniforms now too, plus their turnout gear. The turnout gear is what it's where the fires, which is greatly up back when I joined we were wearing old like that photo, we we're wearing the old rubber coat on the inside <laughs> and boots didn't have our steel toes or nothing and now of course it's been upgraded Yep, yeah, upgraded, yeah. We've had some big fires here in town, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, there was an elevator fire in 1884, I think. They lost 2,000 um, bushel of wheat. And then in 1885, they had the uh, depot burned down in the baggage room yeah. and all of that. What and caused all that? Excuse well, me. A lot of it might have been with electrical, a lot of it might have been with the heating systems. Okay. You know, they burn coal and they burn wood and a lot of that things and and people weren't really uh, trained you know, to be conscious of fire and they were even built out of wood. And, True. You know, and they used kerosene loosely and gasoline. Well, the trains started some of themselves, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. They still do, though. Yeah. yeah. Then in 1888, they had the Opera House. I never heard. Have you I'd heard? I heard of the, about it, but I, I I'd never seen anything on it at all. I mean, I, well, they they, see, they were way ahead of us in some things. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess they had plays there. It's probably like the home school. Yeah. 
You know, they would call it the Opera House, yeah. but that burned three times, you know. Yeah. They'd build it, it would burn. Too much hot singing. <laughs> Whatever it was, I don't know. But the big fire that everyone was talks about is the 1914 <clears throat> fire. They, had t they lost 22 buildings. And in one story, they said they tore down one of the wood buildings. They called in someone to tear it down. Yeah, so it stopped the fire. Stopped the fire. There was a hotel, the Opera House, the Nun's Furniture, um, George People's Store, and the mm -hmm. Converse Building, and the City Fire Hall. Yeah, and the no wood structure. Old wood structures, <coughs> yeah. yeah. Then they finally they built them on the brick and concrete after that. Um, we also lost the Colonial Hotel twice, once in 24 and once mm -hmm. in 56. And, I and that, was all, that was all a wood structure and very run down. Really? And terrible. Well, someone had, two men died in 56. Yeah, that was over top. The hotel was on the corner, kind of diagonal alley, and then <clears throat> above there were rooms extending over what used to be Nysky Beer Hall and the A&B Supply. Okay. And the laundry were there, and they had rooms above, and them guys were there, and they lost them. They didn't have water mains or anything either then at the beginning, well, they, did they? No, no, they, they put, to, before they put hard service streets, they, they were about water mains a long time, you know. Okay. And the sprinkler system, we always say, just like for example, the Norby Star over here, and they had two arson fires over there when I was a chief, and uh, wouldn't have been for the sprinkler system, we probably would have lost them because really? they're all they're all wood structed inside, and they have all the sprinkler system. And we just had to do cleanup. See, so sprinkler is very important. Good water is important. We always fought with the city engineer, make sure the mains are big enough, and make sure you loop everything. Okay. So you get water from every direction. You got water. Years ago, it was all well. Even you know, not long ago, there were uh, long ago. They even in, in town here. We had a lot of wooden buildings, and when one, when one would go, they'd all go, because they were, they were joined together. Right. Now, now of course, they've got firewalls in the basement and all that sort of thing. See. So. But your, your fire equipment upgraded nowadays, your mains are upgraded, so it's, uh, and nowadays you have more danger to your firemen because you have, back when I first joined, you joined the, whoever could breathe the most smoke was the best fireman. Well, you don't do that nowadays. You have to have air apparatus because they have all these chemicals and these plastic stuff that burn that are very toxic. So it's much more dangerous right now. Even though they have better equipment and better personal gear, it's, it's a danger. Well, we're just getting started on the history, so we'll have to continue next week. Yeah. Stay tuned, folks, for the fires of Detroit Lakes. Mm -hmm.